Ok. E mi permette di ricordarvi... che mettiamo tutto il materiale di questi seminari sul solito sito, quello del centro, e quindi ci sarà sia il video che il materiale che i nostri speaker vorranno condividere con noi. Il titolo di oggi è Play the Game AI, che intanto è una falsa citazione perché il vero film Casablanca non c'ha le game, ma non importa. In realtà è più una citazione quindi di un film di Woody Allen, da questo punto di vista, però dovrebbe introdurci al rapporto tra musica e intelligenza artificiale. Le persone che ci parlano di questo sono Maurizio Gabrielli, che interverrà subito dopo di me, è del Dipartimento di Informatica e Scienze e Ingegneria di Unibò, e François Pachet, che ci porta la propria esperienza, eh, direi fondamentale, che ho identificato solo con Spotify, ma potrebbe essere identificato con molto altro, Armando Saielli, che è un musicista, che ci parlerà prettamente della parte musicale, di questo, appunto, dal punto di vista musicale anche classico, di questo rapporto tra intelligenza artificiale e, e musica e poi Stefano Ferretti un, un collega che una volta era qua con noi a Bologna adesso è al Dipartimento di Scienze Pure Applicate dell'Università di Urbino che avrà un terzo punto di vista ancora diverso non mi rimane quindi che dire che spero che vi divertiate e interagiate con i nostri speaker subito dopo l'ordine ehm, che propongo per gli speaker è quello di cominciare con ciao Aldo di quello di cominciare con Maurizio che so che ha qualche parola introduttiva da dire anche in merito a un progetto che sta cercando di organizzare, poi proseguire in ordine di distanza inversa, diciamo così, dal, dalla location ideale in cui dovremmo essere, Bologna, poi chissà se siamo a Bologna, quindi partendo da François e poi andando ad Armando e poi finendo con, eh, con il nostro collega di Urbino. A questo punto lascerei la parola a Maurizio, immediatamente, per non prendervi ulteriore tempo. Gra uh, grazie Riccardo, should I speak in English, I guess, right? Whatever uh, you want, whatever it yes. takes. <laughs> uh, o o francese, is no, but English is better, but um, no, I thank you Riccardo for uh, giving me this opportunity. I will take just a couple of minutes, not more. Uh, first of all, to thank uh, all of you for organizing this meeting because uh, I'm a computer scientist, but my first, uh, how can I say, first and unique love is music. I've been studying uh, classical music for uh, half of my life, actually. And um, I honestly, I've been always a little bit skeptical about the application of uh, um, computer science, first uh, informatic musical and then uh, AI to music. And only in the last few uh, years or months, actually, I've been convinced that these tools uh, can provide a significant, a really significant uh, um, add to the classical musician, at least. And uh, I'm here today only uh, basically for listening to, the, uh, to our guest, in, part in particular Francois, who's been uh, doing uh, very important uh, work in this field. And I would like also to only to remind to the colleagues in Bologna that we are uh, uh, cooperating uh, uh, with um, uh, the group of uh, house in Milano and uh, the Conservatorio di Firenze on a project which uh, has been submitted and we will see what happens. So the project is, is about uh, um, to, uh, it's called the virtual musician. So it's about uh, automatic system, uh, uh, system for automatic uh, music, um, music. Um... Sorry. Sorry, there is, there is some, um, some noise uh, that I hear. So uh, it's about, I was saying, um, two things. So systems for uh, automatic accompaniment, there are already similar tools, but they are rather primitive. So we want to advance uh, in those tools and uh, most interesting, we would like also to apply techniques, machine learning techniques, and in particular style transfer techniques, uh, which are used uh, in uh, computer vision, as uh, we know very well. So we would like to apply those techniques uh, to study the, the idea of uh, style transfer in the context of music, in particular for uh, trying to um, how can I say, understand the style 
not only of a composer, which already is something which exists, but in particular the style of uh, a, an interpreter, so a famous musician, a, a piano player or whatever. So the idea is to, to learn from the recordings, from the scores, uh, and from a lot of different uh, sources of data, the style of this uh, uh, interpreter, and so that we are, one is able to uh, to repeat that that that, that style. And uh, I don't know whether Valentina is around here, our colleague Valentina Presutti. So in this, yes, in this project in Bologna, yes. we are working with uh, Valentina. Ciao, Valentina. With Valentina and um, Marco Rocetti. And uh, Valentina in particular is uh, providing uh, um, some... Uh, there is still... The, the, the mics uh, should be off, uh, please. Um, so my, my Valentina has an European project uh, uh, on uh, similar topics, which could provide the, bas the, the basis for, for our project. And, and I don't know whether Valentina wants to tell like, something about uh, her project. So, so that's what, what I, I would, I don't have any slide and want to go into the technical details. And, um, but if someone is interested here in Bologna, he can uh, contact us. I mean, uh, we are starting this cooperation and of course we are open also to uh, cooperate, cooperating with the Mm, other colleagues from other universities. Uh, I, <clears throat> Maurizio, as you mentioned, I don't want to take time, so I will only mention that the project, the European project that Maurizio was referring to, uh, is the, its name is Polyphonia. Uh, it uh, started uh, in uh, January, so you can Google it. Uh, there is a website where you can see it's about uh, actually um, uh, we, we will do both analysis on sound and the text for uh, extracting knowledge about uh, the musical heritage, uh, both from the perspective of uh, musical patterns in sound content and also historical uh, stories and, and content from text, multilingual text. Uh, and uh, and the te basic technology that we will develop uh, is uh, our knowledge graphs, and then we will build applications on top of them. I, I don't go beyond this, but if you're interested, then I'd be really happy to get in touch with the, any of you. Uh, please just drop me an email or uh, look at the website or whatever you, you want. Okay, thanks. So that's it also from my side. I think uh, we are all here to listen to the to the next speaker. Yes, right, perfectly. Okay, so Francois, I leave the floor to you. Thank you. Uh, well, again, thanks thanks also for inviting me, and I'm always very happy to interact with people from uh, Unibo, uh, and I've been doing this for a long time. Um, so I have a, just a few minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes to 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 try to say uh, maybe two, give maybe two or three ideas, yeah. say, uh, based on, uh, yes, the experience I've had for a number of years now in designing AI systems for um, uh, assisting, let's say, assisting uh, music composition. Uh, and I want to say right away, because we have uh, classical musicians in the room, <laughs> that this is mostly for main, what we call what is called mainstream music, in 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 in, in English uh, popular music. In French, there is no word for that, uh, but basically uh, the music that is mostly uh, played, uh, which is mostly uh, let's say pop, rock, uh, hip hop, uh, rap. Uh, funk, uh, jazz, uh, and qu quite, I mean, excluding, I would say, classical music, which I think uh, obeys completely different laws. I, by the way, I'm also musically trained, so it's not at all a criticism here. It's just to to be very precise that I have not much experience in, uh, in classical music uh, uh, composition. Uh, so the first thing I want to say, because we are all uh, hearing about AI every day on absolutely every subject, every domain of activity more or less now is touched by AI. Uh, but I want something say something very uh, simple that music, um, um, like uh, all uh, art forms, um, is not uh, what we call a well-defined problem in AI. 
so uh, in AI, actually more, more precisely in uh, machine learning, as you know, the recent progresses, they are based on the idea that you have problems which are well-defined in the sense that you have a function somewhere, or you are able to define exactly what you're trying to do. Uh, typically, uh, uh, this well-defined function will tell you, for instance, that you want to win the chess game and it's very well-defined, or you want to recognize a face, this is well-defined, you know if it's true or if it's right or wrong. You want to drive a car and all this is well-defined, you know what is right, what is uh, wrong. Uh, in art, you, you don't know that, and actually that's maybe even possibly a definition of art, is to, tr is, is to try to create uh, artifacts uh, without having a very precise notion of what is good and what is bad. This is not about good and bad, right? So, so um, uh, in that sense, uh, music is not a well-defined domain, it is not a well-defined problem for AI. Uh, but yet, uh, yet there are lots of people, including ourselves and many others, who are trying to use the technology of AI uh, to uh, not solve the music problem, because again, music is not a problem that is well defined, but try to uh, assist or to give ideas, let's say, or explore, to do some kind of exploration. So I want to be very precise on this. And here again, I would like to quote a paper that I think is incredibly uh, fascinating by uh, Salganik and Watts, uh, which was published in Science in, I think, 2006, so it's already like quite old, which, which uh, very clearly shows that um, the music, the, the data we have about music, again, I'm, I'm talking mostly about popular music, for instance, what we call the popularity data, you know, how popular is a song, for instance, or an artist or an album. So we have a lot of data about popularity now, especially because people are listening to music on the web. So we have all the streaming data, for instance, very, very precise. So you, one could think that, yeah, we have a, a, a great problem for machine learning because we have, we have the data for each song, for instance, we know exactly how many people listen to the song. And we could use this data, you know, to try to train a system to generate music that people will uh, will like. And so this is uh, a very, uh, let's say, intuitive, intuitively very uh, straightforward idea. But uh, there is a big but, and that's very, very fascinating, is that the, the, the popularity data, it has been shown that it's, it's a kind of chaotic data. It's not something that you can rely on. It depends on too many factors like the culture, the, the moment, the, the, the period where the things happen. And there's, there is a great paper on that, which I think everyone in music, in the music industry should read, um, that clearly showed that, that actually all the popularity, popularity data is is absolutely not rea reliable. So you cannot you cannot build a system that will uh, basically generate uh, music that people will like. It, it does not mean much, really. Uh, all right. So so um, just a little bit about my the background and and les the lessons learned. So so we have been doing like AI for music for a while. We had some milestones uh, just for the the record so this we did this thing called daddy's car which was a pastiche let's say of the beatles in uh, 2016 then there was the flow machines project which has, was an erc project in which we developed uh, other technologies for assisting composition and i don't want to talk to here about the technologies i want to do talk about the results the, the main result was an album called uh, Hello World, which was actually a double album. If you think about vinyls, I mean, that, that would be on two vinyls, uh, we, where many musicians came and, and composed uh, songs with the, the technologies. Um, and that was an album which had some, uh, let's say, some interesting uh, success and, and feedback. And then there was another album, which I want to mention, called Hello World Remix. Uh, that's interesting because, um, in in the, again, in the popular music, you have albums, you have songs, but sometimes you have also a lot of remix. So a remix is a, someone taking a song which has already been done, but but re creating another mix, another production, if you want. And so we 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 did this. Hello World remix was the uh, original songs composed by AI, which were remixed by remixers, right? 
And this album also is, I think, very interesting musically. And I want to mention the last album that Skiga uh, released in 2019, which is a very interesting project called America, American Folk Songs. So in this in this uh, EP, this album, the idea was to use, uh, to, to re-orchestrate a number of uh, traditional folk songs, American folk songs, for which uh, uh, we had the voice of uh, Pete Seeger. Pete Seeger is a very famous blues singer, American, who is dead now. Uh, but the idea was to keep his voice and then generate a completely new orchestration, uh, which we did using uh, various AI tools that we, uh, we designed at uh, Spotify. So and I'm just mentioning here what's important for me much more than the technology are the musical outputs of whatever we did, you know, and there were a number of them. And I think they are, you know, worth, uh, they are actually probably more interesting than the technologies themselves. Um, uh, so that's, 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 that's the background. So one of the questions that I had to answer to myself and also to, to, uh, to people who gave us the money to do this was, you know, in the end, what did you learn? What did you do? What did you try to do with all these tools and all this uh, music and all these experiments? And there were many of them. And so I had to reflect on that uh, during the first confinement, you know, uh, last year, uh, to write a chapter for a book about uh, the handbook of uh, music and artificial intelligence. And, um, and, and, and at the end, I came to the uh, this idea that, uh, uh, what uh, what AI brings uh, to the music uh, composition or music creation, uh, you know, thing is not is not one thing. What, but what what it brings, which I think is interesting, is that uh, we have new uh, new categories of new, uh, and that's the title of the, the the chapter, by the way. If some of you are interested, so what I mean by that, by that is that before AI, we had like a you know a new song you know something is new and uh, and that's one category and then we have another category which uh, which is something that is plagiarism pl uh, plagiaristic you know something is not new because it actually contains copies or more or less uh, 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 exact copies of existing songs right so we had like the plagiaristic things and the new things and now with ai you have a lot of uh, new categories for instance you have um what what we can call a, a stylistic explorations. So you have a song that is new within the, the a style, which is itself defined by a number a number of existing songs. So this song is not going to be plagiaristic, but it's also not go be, going to be completely different from existing works. Uh, you have stylistic singularities. You have pastiches like uh, the discar, I think, is is one or the choral, the back chorals that we generated. Uh, can be seen as kind of pastiches. Uh, we have all sorts of, of transfers, as it was mentioned before, style transfer, but you have also harmonic transfers, rhythm transfers, you have all different kinds of transfers. So transfer is a way to go from one song to another one, which both exist and creating a third one. So that's a new category of new. That's what I'm, tr I'm trying to say. And you have many uh, of these categories, probably, I don't know, in the about uh, the dozens or, or something like this. And so, and so the, the result is not that, you know, we can compose, uh, AI is going to compose, that's completely uh, nonsense, but AI is bringing new categories of new things we can do with music, given the technologies and the databases. With So that's an idea I'm proposing, and, and, uh, and I hope, you know, we can discuss, maybe not today, but uh, one day, um, which is the, the main output of this um, thing. So, um, I just want to mention now another idea also, which actually was the reason why I, um, the main reason I left Sony to go to Spotify. Um, it's not because I am a Western capitalist. I am not, uh, <laughs> I'm a musician like uh, some of you, but because of the, the following reason, which I think I already uh, talked uh, in Bologna, but uh, uh, two years ago, but, um, so people today they listen to music on uh, on uh, smartphones, right? Many people, especially the young people, and so uh, we, we so we have lots of data about the way people listen to music. In particular, we know exactly when they stop listening. You know, so they stop listening, uh, for instance, because they don't like the music or because. Uh, 
it's it's boring or because they want to go directly to the next song you know in the queue or for many reasons that we don't know exactly why they skip but we have a very precise data about the skip you know so what we call the skip profile for a song so for instance we know very well for each song how many people skipped at each moment in time and so th there were already some uh, pre preliminary work about trying to analyze the skip profiles of uh, of music and it's very very interesting because it's the first time in history where we know exactly when people stop to listen right uh, and so so we made some studies and i just want to mention the the main outputs the main uh, results here i don't have the time to go into details but uh, i think it's fascinating so the first thing we we showed is that if you take a song when i say a song it's a musical piece but usually it's a song but uh, and you look at the skip profile, the way that the, the number of people uh, stop listening in time, uh, then we have we have shown that this profile is more or less independent on, ta on time. What I mean by that is that if you look at the skip profile of, of a song in France, and then you look again one month later, uh, obviously, it would be probably quite different people listening, but uh, the skip profile is going to be exactly the same. Uh, not exactly at the, sum, uh, the, at the sample uh, precision, but it's, uh, it would be exactly the same profile, the same bumps and the same uh, overall shape. And that's very, very surprising. So the skip profile is stable in time. And even more surprising, if you look at the skip profile of a song in, say, France or Europe, and then the same song in the states so obviously we'll, you will have different people have listened to the song but then the skip profile is also exactly the same so so it means that the way people skip to a song does not depend on time it does not depend on location does not depend on the people i mean statistically of course and that's very very surprising and very interesting so so and i we have been looking at this and trying also now to go a bit deeper and trying to understand why people stop listening. So that will not help us understanding why people like music, which is a big, big mystery, you know. Um, but it can help us understanding, you know, the dynamics of how people listen to music. And I think that is very, very new and very uh, interesting. And that's uh, so there is a paper in Plus One which was published this year uh, describing uh, some of these uh, experiments. Um, and if I can have a few more minutes, I'm not sure, I'm not checking the time at all here. Um, I would like to mention now uh, something that, um, uh, uh, let's say, a, a kind of problem that we we discovered, uh, because as you know, now I'm, I'm, work, I'm working at Spotify, I'm not working uh, in a university, so of course there are lots of uh, what we called uh, industrial constraints. You know, uh, Michela probably knows very well. So when you work for a company, you have to, you know, do something useful, right? Uh, you have to have users and all these things. And so um, uh, progressively, so, so we were we were a bit uh, surprised, in fact, when we did some tests of various algorithms, uh, various uh, AI generating algorithms, that uh, let's say more the, the 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 observation was more or less than that it's not because the algorithm generates something better that the users will be more happy and that is a, that's a bit of a paradox and so and and and, uh, and in the end uh, I mean currently the, the the idea just very very quickly is to say that so uh, what's important is not so much the quality of the music that the AI is going to generate, but, but actually, you don't, anyway, you don't have any m precise measure of the quality of music again. Uh, uh, but still, you can have some measures of, how, for instance, how conformant to a style or uh, that of uh, plagiarism and stuff like this. But but still, um, so 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 what happens here is is something which actually is quite well known in psychology, which is called the uh, IKEA effect, and I want just to mention this because it's really very, inter very interesting. So the IKEA effect is an effect which is well known in psychology, which uh, basically uh, says that people tend to uh, ascribe more value, to give more value to things that they have done, right? 
rather than things that they have not done. For and and so the, there is a very famous um, story about that uh, about the you know the first Americans who invented the uh, uh, cake instant cake you know uh, powder. So you buy a, a, a powder, you put it in the in the oven, and then after a while you have a cake. And then that was not working very well commercially. And then people realized that if you remove from the powder all the eggs, and then you 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 ask people to actually cook the eggs themselves, then it became very very popular. So it showed really that when people uh, uh, participate in the making of the thing, then they ascribe more value, and they think it's more you know valuable and uh, enjoyable. And that that effect has been observed in many many uh, circumstances by psychologists, also economists. For instance, if you buy a, if you have your hot house and you repair the roof because it's broken and you repair it yourself, then when you sell the house, you will tend to put a higher price because you did it yourself, which is, of course, not rational, but it's a human bias, which is very well known. So I come back to music now and to AI. And 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 and, and so the idea or the intuition behind this is that we should not look not only at the uh, quality of the algorithms, the performance in the sense of how, what is it, what is it generating? Is it re really generating something uh, new and interesting all that, but also at what we call a sense of appropriation. So because in the end, what's important is not that the music is good. Uh, again, we don't know, even know what it means, but what is important is that the user, the composer, uh, thinks that this object is his object or this piece of music, this chord progression, this melody, this harmony, whatever, the rhythm. And so so, it, so what is really going to um, attach, let's say, or to please or to, to, uh, to be interesting for a user is, is the fact that he has participated to the creation of whatever the AI has been doing. And so there are lots of ways you can do this. There are, of course, the you can you you have to let the user choose for instance the training sets also curate the results but that's kind of uh, as kind of uh, you know uh, classical but also uh, have ways of uh, letting him tune parameters letting him uh, <clears throat> interact with the with the results in in very intimate ways uh, otherwise you don't get any sense of appropriation so you get a kind of paradox in the end which is that if you have a if you had a perfectly uh, well designed AI and you click on a button and then you have a mar marvelous music piece that you had in your mind, probably this would not in be of interest for anyone because the the user would not have done anything, right? So that that's a kind of paradox because you have a kind of trade off to find between the quality or the the um, the performance of the algorithm, which has to be of course very good, but also the implication of the user without which whatever you do in this domain has a strictly no interest for anyone. So so that's uh, that's uh, in a few words the kind of stuff that I, I was uh, trying to uh, I was uh, you know I wanted to share with you. So, uh, so so two main points again to summarize from the listener viewpoint, the guy who is going to listen to the results of this AI music uh, blah blah blah. Um, the skip profile, the way so so the skip profile is a new kind of data that's really very interesting, and I'm I'm sure that there will be lots of work on this, because we actually know very very little about how people listen to music, why they they like, why they don't, how they get bored, how they get excited, and all this. And so and so we have for the first time in in uh, history, I think, uh, precise data to look at this. So from the listener viewpoint and from the composer viewpoint or the creator viewpoint. Um, I think we should not be interested only in the performance of algorithms, uh, but also in the sense of appropriation, without which uh, anything we do is completely um, uh, ir irrelevant, I think, uh, in the sense that no one would be uh, interested in using this. All right, uh, I, I think I've, that's, that's what I wanted to say. I'm not, I'm not sure about the timing. I'm no problem, absolutely. It was very interesting. By the way, you will be happy to know that Mirko is here, is connected, so probably... Oh, Cool, cool. Hello. Don't... Yes. Hey, Mr. President. <laughs> ciao, Mirko. Ciao a tutti, ciao. Ciao. 
So uh, thank you very much, Francois. I have a lot of questions I would like to, 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 to make, but of course I will keep them for, for, for the end of the talk. And I will switch language perché penso che Armando parlerà in italiano. E gli darei subito la parola. E non so che cosa... Sì, deve, deve ancora togliere il microfono. Cioè deve... Ok, ci sei adesso. Thank you so much, Carlo. Grazie. Ok. Pleasure to be here. Ok. Uh, for me it's, it's difficult to speak English for uh, complicated ideas. And, uh, but one question in English. And uh, this is uh, the question. What is music? What are we doing when we play music, when we make music? And this is a great problem. Uh, we also without uh, AI. So, in Italian, uh, qual è il problema? Il problema è che da se anzi da millenni, da sempre, no? E grandi, eh, grandi menti dell'umanità si sono interrogate sulla natura della musica. Eh, abbiamo visto ad esempio Socrate e Platone scrivere trattati di, eh, di grande profondità e di grande controllo anche del metodo scientifico ante litera, no? Però nel momento in cui arrivano a parlare di musica anche questi grandi personaggi si perdono si perdono un po' perché il discorso si sfilaccia, perde quella eh, precisione che eh, invece si può esercitare in altri ambiti. E quindi fondamentalmente è evidente da sempre che nella musica sì, eh, c'è tanta matematica, ci sono tanti numeri, ci sono tante relazioni, ma c'è anche qualche cosa di eternamente insondabile e misterioso che convive con la musica. E forse in questa fase, con l'aiuto dell'intelligenza artificiale, possiamo attuare questo attacco decisivo a questa componente della musica che è da sempre un mistero. Sappiamo per esempio che già dall'antichità eh, riuscivano a fare esempi, no? ma quando siamo all'interrogazione e il professore ci fa una domanda, se non sappiamo bene la risposta, la prima cosa che facciamo è un esempio. E anche con la musica spesso siamo costretti a fare esempi. Allora, eh, lavorando un po' e pensando un attimo alla musica eh, in relazione all'intelligenza artificiale, noi naturalmente parliamo di una storia che ha poco più di 60 anni, no? I primi esperimenti di musica eh, e intelligenza artificiale risalgono agli anni 50. E io non sono un matematico, ma eh, qui ho chi mi può aiutare. È un algoritmo una macchina e un insieme di possibilità che però devono essere sempre eh, filtrate dalla mente del, dal, dal lavoro del compositore. Questa componente umana eh, difficilmente rimane estranea al processo creativo e anche qui eh, non vedo grandi elementi di novità rispetto al passato, da sempre nella tradizione occidentale, della musica europea occidentale, diciamo, il lavoro del compositore in che cosa consiste? Consiste, sgrossiamo, eh, trovare temi, trovare temi interessanti. Ma poi, soprattutto, trovare quali temi, che cosa deve seguire a, a questo, trovare le note che devono seguire, altrimenti non si va da nessuna parte. Ecco, allora io adesso faccio un parallelo, perché eh, mi voglio, voglio immaginare eh, Beethoven che eh, mentre compone eh, la uh, Quinta Sinfonia ha a disposizione una macchina che gli fornisce materiali, materiali su materiali, rapidamente. Voi immaginate che per scrivere questa sinfonia ha impiegato anni di lavoro, anni di appunti, 
Abbiamo eh, diverse versioni di quella che è diventata poi la quinta sinfonia che conosciamo. E quindi se Beethoven avesse avuto un, una macchina in grado di aiutarlo, forse avrebbe fatto prima. In, in realtà questa composizione dura davvero il travaglio creativo. Abbiamo appunti, pagine su pagine, di temi che sono... Sì, gradevoli, perché eh, è sempre Beethoven che scrive, ma lo stesso Beethoven scarta pagine su pagine. Ecco, un altro esempio molto eh, importante è stata la sinfonia di, 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 di Schubert, la incompiuta. Questo è un esperimento eh, piuttosto recente, no? qui sono entrati in gioco i, le macchine eh, della Huawei e sapete Schubert ha scritto due movimenti di questa celeberrima sinfonia, ma poi lui stesso dopo, dopo un primo tempo eh, straordinario del quale ricordiamo facilmente mh, nella musica classica mh, la melodia e, e che cosa succede, poi ha scritto un secondo movimento e lì si è fermato. Dopo tanti musicisti hanno provato e solo con eh, le macchine, solo con l'intelligenza artificiale si è arrivati a completare questa, questa, questa melodia, questa, questa sinfonia insomma. Insomma il discorso è, è, molto, è, molto, interessante, è molto interessante e di sicuro... Eh, il lavoro viene messo di fianco al il lavoro delle macchine viene messo di fianco al lavoro dei grandi compositori allora il, il problema è eh, che cosa rende una musica straordinaria che cosa rende una musica una melodia eh, la, la melodia il tema di beethoven pensate ad esempio il, il secondo movimento della quinta sinfonia no quell'adagio straordinario lui ha impiegato anni per arrivare a quella parte lì a quella pagina lì e quindi lui ha sentito probabilmente che era necessario lavorare lavorare e, e lavorare ancora prima di avere qualche cosa degno di essere chiamato musica ora se abbiamo l'esigenza di avere eh, musica per filmati, documentari, musica di consumo e molto velocemente noi oggi lavorando nella musica non possiamo far finta che non esista l'intelligenza artificiale perché eh, sarebbe anche stupido. Io ho fatto alcuni esperimenti utilizzando la piattaforma AIVA che sicuramente eh, François conosce molto bene e a, questa piattaforma eh, AIVA eh, ci permette di eh, comporre musica ed è stata anche riconosciuta dalla, dalla, dalla SACEM, che è un'istituzione importante. Ecco, allora io voglio solo ricordare che c'è un, un grande monolite un, che, che è la musica, eh, che è fatto di tante cose, di numeri ma non solo numeri, e anche di, di magia. E oggi credo che sia sbagliato eh, rifiutare eh, la possibilità che viene dall'intelligenza dall artificiale, perché come diceva Schoenberg nel, nel 1911, l'impulso più nobile è quello della conoscenza, ci impone il dovere della ricerca e anche se una dottrina dovesse essere sbagliata, ma se è il frutto di una onesta ricerca, è sempre più in alto della sicurezza di chi dice no, di chi la rinnega. Ecco, quindi perché crede di sapere senza aver cercato di persona. Allora oggi dobbiamo tenere presente questa cosa e ha ah, innanzitutto una componente di divertimento che è fuori discussione, perché chiunque voglia provare a scrivere musica 
magari scarta eh, cinque composizioni, ma alla sesta composizione trova qualcosa di gradevole. E se poi deve comporre, allora dopo aggiunge quello che sa, quello che sa fare, la sua orchestrazione, la sua, la sua arte, insomma. E, e quindi questa è la situazione, insomma, ed è originale osservare che il primo esperimento di musica eh, e intelligenza artificiale sia venuto da un non musicista di professione. Eh, il, il primo, la, la, la Iliac Suite no? Del, di Hiller, eh, lui non è un compositore, Hiller, è, è un chimico statunitense che è però ha la passione della musica ed è il primo che si butta in questa grande avventura. Eh, L'algoritmo ci lavora, seleziona materiali, ha materiali a disposizione e poi arriva a produrre eh, come un artigiano, come poi diceva anche Schoenberg nel suo manuale d'armonia. Quindi diventa Hiller, che non è un compositore di professione, diventa un perfetto mastro musico eh, nella più grande tradizione musicale, musicale, perché sceglie i materiali e usa la macchina con intelligenza. Quindi l'intelligenza artificiale produce possibilità. Questo, è, questo è, è, è naturale e quindi eh, avanti, insomma, adesso abbiamo una sinfonia incompiuta di Schubert che non è più incompiuta, è completata. Poi rimane il fatto che noi ricordiamo a memoria, noi, noi musicisti ricordiamo a memoria la musica del primo movimento, non la musica del terzo e del quarto movimento, ma questo è un altro discorso. Anche, anche l'intelligenza artificiale avrà eh, qualche limite, e, come peraltro eh, ce l'hanno eh, le intelligenze umane, perché mh, se non è stato nessuno capace di finirla prima, vabbè, l'intelligenza artificiale lo ha fatto come lo ha fatto e quindi eh, questo, questo è un po' il discorso. Poi se vogliamo possiamo anche brevemente ascoltare qualche esperimento eh, di, simpatico secondo me eh, di, di, di composizione con intelligenza artificiale. Vi, vi posso eh, condividere un minuto di eh, un tema che ho ricavato appunto dalla pagina AIVA, se, se volete. Procedo. Certo. Eccolo qui. Spero che sentiate. Avete sentito? Si è interrotto però un certo punto. Sì, ripartiamo. Introduzione. Eccoci qua. Questo deve essere un piccolo esempio. E se io dovessi scrivere musiche per un documentario su Far West, dopo due minuti di ascolto potrei già procedere a una strumentazione. Quindi, oltretutto, c'è il grande pregio di avere a disposizione un materiale che ricavato da modelli, da tanti modelli, ma che, che è nuovo, cioè è nuovissimo, N non ho il rischio di copiare da qualche altra parte. E poi naturalmente si apre il grande problema dei, dei diritti d'autore, ma qui eh, so che 
ci, ci sono esperti nel, nel settore, perché ovviamente il diritto d'autore è un, un tasto dolente eh, nell'attività eh, del, sì, del, del musicista, ma um, in generale, diciamo. Ecco, il problema fondamentale, quindi, è quello di scrivere qualche cosa che vada da qualche parte, di scrivere qualche cosa che abbia una sua energia, perché come Beethoven ha scritto delle cose che ha ritenuto non non sufficientemente all'altezza del, del, della sua aspirazione, ecco, anche, anche l'intelligenza artificiale fa quello, che, fa quello che può, insomma. Quindi eh, io vi posso, vi posso fare un esempio, ma guardate, voi capite bene che se vi suono questa cosa... bene che qualche cosa di simile a che portava avanti il discorso e questo è, è qualche cosa che credo solo un compositore può fare anche il compositore che usa l'intelligenza artificiale cioè deve scegliere deve operare una scelta e deve ipotizzare essere capace di immaginare di immaginare dei percorsi che sono un po' il viaggio emozionale rappresentato da una composizione musicale. Ecco, io, questo è, è un po', diciamo, il, il senso dell'idea che mi sono fatto, poi ci sarebbero Magic. tantissime cose da dire, ma non voglio rubare altro spazio a, Beh, ai nostri non... amici. Ti abbiamo voluto per il punto di vista artistico, di sei, direi che abbiamo avuto il punto di vista artistico, decisamente, decisamente. Grazie mille, Erman. Grazie, grazie a voi. Direi che possiamo passare a Stefano. Ok, I think I should, I can switch back to English if you want. Uh, as you like. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, th thanks a lot for having me today. It's really a pleasure to, to discuss about this uh, very interesting uh, topic. Uh, also, because very interesting uh, insights uh, I had from the pre previous talk. Uh, actually, in this case, I have uh, some... Scusa, Stefano, ti interrompo solo per dire ad Armando se può togliere la sua condivisione. Giusto. Um, actually, uh, I have some slides. Don't worry, nothing technical, because I'm aware it, it should be an aperitif. Uh, so, um, unfortunately, we cannot have drinks, but maybe we can have some music. <laughs> uh, uh, and just let me let me share my screen. Uh, it is something which actually <clears throat> it is more related. Um, you should be able to see my screen now. I hope so. Uh, it is more related to uh, one of my interest in, in, in research, which is uh, uh, related to complex network theory. Um, uh, but there is also some uh, data analytics uh, stuff that may, can, can have some interest for you. Uh, and, and the idea is that uh, in complex network theory, we, we, we tend to see everything as a network. So every, any kind of system in general, uh, we try to represent it somehow as a network. Uh, so the idea actually is something that started uh, with a joke, I can say. Uh, but uh, the idea is that, that starting from um, uh, uh, a, 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 a musical sheet, so something that is uh, like this one, in this case, it's a very famous solo of uh, a, a, a main jazz musician, which is John Coltrane, the song is a solo of, of the song Giant Steps. Uh, the idea is that starting to, 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 to look at this and um, giving uh, another representation, which is related to, uh, which is represented as a network, that's the idea. Um, um, well, first of all, <clears throat> how we can build this? I, I, again, I don't, know what go, don't want to go into the details, but uh, it is very simple, the idea. Uh, imagine you have this very simple sheet uh, which, where we have some notes, and basically, <clears throat> as you know, notes are played in sequence. So, uh, in this case, every note becomes a node of a network, 
And uh, when you have a succession of, of these nodes, for, for instance, here, here we go from C to D, then we create a link from this node to another node. And then here we have from D to another D, then we have this H that leaves the, the, the node and then enters once again in the node. Uh, and then from D, we go back to C. So we add a link here, and then we go back to D. So we have another, another link, which is the same we had before, and so on. Then from D to G, so we create another node and we have the link. Then we have a rest. So we have another, another node related to uh, the rest. And then once again, G, but with a different duration. So in this case, we can create another, another node and uh, add a link here. So that's basically the, 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 the thing I started uh, dealing with in my, in my study. And this allows you to, to create a network uh, that says something. I mean, I mean from just from a visual uh, effect, here in this case, as you can see, the, these are some nodes of, of, uh, of this, this particular solo from John Coltrane. Uh, and these are uh, nodes, as you can see, uh, there are some which are bigger than the others. Uh, basically, I don't want to go to, in, to technical details, but it's related to the importance of the note. And if you are aware of the harmony behind this, um, this, this, this solo and the, of, of, about the, the, the music, the picture, uh, the, 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 the piece that we are dealing with, these are the main notes of the main chord of the, of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the song. Uh, then just to, to uh, spend some few seconds listening to 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 the the solo because I think it's it's, it's interesting. Uh, just let me jump to the solo directly. I know I, I know that this uh, a pity, but we don't have, do not have much time. <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately, I have to stop here because, <laughs> because I don't have so much time. But um, as you can see, it was very complicated. One, actually, one of the main complications is one of the most studied solos in, the, in, in jazz uh, literature, let's say. Uh, and indeed, the, 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 the network captured this. Okay, uh, here we have another, uh, uh, and I will not go into the mathematical details and the characteristics that you can extract from this network. So all the metrics that you can measure uh, that give some information, but, but I will come, come back to this later. Uh, here we have another one from another famous musician, another famous song, which is So What? Uh, and also in this case, I think we can listen a little bit of, of the solo. Can hear is very very different style, even if it's jazz. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of rests and uh, a lot of a lot of time, so it's very different. And the structure of the of the of the network is very different once again. And somehow you can you can say that. Uh, and in fact, this the the, the summary of this network uh, can say that what uh, Miles Davis was saying that is the, the less is more. In fact, the main important notes in the, in the solo are rests, and this says something. <laughs> and then the structure is very, is very, um, is really more simple um, with respect to the previous one. Um, okay, let's skip the, the, some technical essays. He, here we have another one just to, to, to we have some fun. Uh, the, the solo of Jimi Hendrix, which is one of my favorite uh, musicians, uh, I have to say. Uh, and this is one of the best solos in music. In, well, at least this is my opinion. <laughs> was tempted to, <laughs> to leave the music till the end, but, uh, uh, 
Also in this case, you have a, 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 a structure of, uh, of the network, which is uh, definitely uh, simpler than the, that of John Coltrane, and uh, uh, again, rests have some importance here. Uh, but it, in the end, it is still a complex network, even if it is a solo, which is basically uh, composed of uh, uh, pentatonic scales, which are considered simple. It is a blues solo, so, so it, it is considered simple. But if you look at the, at the network, uh, it isn't definitely. Um, and once again, okay, sorry. And here we have some classical music. Here we have uh, Paganini. And also in this case, there are a lot of staccatos, so um, a lot of rests, which have many importance. Also, the the thickness of the hedges have some meaning. Um, So a lot of notes, uh, a lot of notes, uh, but the most important ones are rests, and there are some 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 links which are which are more important than than, than other ones. And this is another thing that is uh, as in common with another uh, another network, which is the flight of the bumblebee. And then we we, we finished with this, <laughs> um, which is considered one of the most difficult. So. Uh, sheets to, to play for it's uh, something that usually people uh, musicians play in order to demonstrate their ability and, and their ability to be virtuoso uh, from a technical point of view but if you look at the network it's very simple actually uh, so very difficult to play but since uh, the, basically the the melody here is a sort of uh, chromatisms that are repeated several times, very fast. Uh, but the the structure of of the network, uh, in the end, is very similar. You can see a lot of chains here because, uh, in fact, the 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 sheet uh, is composed of several chromatisms, as I said, that are repeated many, 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 many times. And once again, there is these rests that are very important in this case with respect to other notes. So that basically is the general idea. I think that this representation already gives some 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 interesting aspects that uh, from a musicology a musicology point of view. Um, but then we can do more. Um, uh, and if you take the, the 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 characteristic of of these networks, uh, again, I will not go into the mathematical details because it's not. I don't, do not have time and probably is not of interest. I'm I just trying to give you some, some idea, an idea of, of, of the study. And, and we, we try to, to say if there are something in common, and, and here it comes the, the, the data analytics, then we can take all these characteristics of the networks and try to understand if different networks coming from different melodies, for instance, uh, do have something in common. Here, uh, I, I show you, I'm showing you some results from uh, a study I made on, on guitar solos. Uh, I'm a guitar enthusiast. I will not dare to say that I'm a, I'm a musician, <laughs> but uh, I'm a guitar enthusiast. So I, I, I took some of um, important guitar solos, of course, there were more than this. Uh, here is just a, a, a subset. Um, and I try to, to, to understand that uh, starting from a solo, uh, I, I created the, the, the network and then looking at the characteristics of the network, try to understand if there are, they have some in common. In, in other words, I tried to, to make some clustering uh, about the, the networks that were uh, obtained from the solo. And as you can see, if you have some knowledge about the, the guitar players, here you have some clusters that are represented by these boxes. And as you can see in each cluster, you have a lot of uh, uh, solos coming from the same musician, which is something where that is, <laughs> you, you, you can say that, okay, it, 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 it works uh, uh, somehow, but also uh, there are some similarities between uh, some, among some of these musicians, for instance, B.B. King and Eric Clapton. Uh, are two blues players, so they do have very similarities, for in some sense. 
uh, here we have Pat Metini, which is not strictly related, but uh, okay, it's okay. Here in this case, Steve Vai and Henry Van Allen, which were rock guitar players, and, and they are similar. There is, we have a cluster here. Again, Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix, which are considered uh, similar somehow uh, guitar players. And so on here, we have a cluster of virtuoso guitar players, and again, Van Allen, and again, other, other clusters. So uh, it, it, this kind of representation works uh, if you look at the clustering. And in fact, also, if we apply some kind of mathematical uh, and um, data analysis uh, uh, metrics, such as the opening statistic, uh, it reveals that there is some clustering tendency, actually. Um, and then basically that they, they also tried to, to make some kind of uh, uh, classification based on the music genres. Given the, the networks uh, obtained from the representation I, I was mentioned before, uh, and in this case we have uh, pretty good results, I have to say, but there are some, some, some errors and so there is some room of improvement. Um, for instance, there were some errors so, so, so here, I, I just take to, to, to Harris, for instance, West Montgomery, that uh, it was considered a jazz, uh, a jazz uh, piece that was um, uh, classified as a blues piece. But in fact, I have to say that the, the harmony of the, the thumb, which is the song we have considered, it is actually a, a blues. Uh, the harmony is it was a blues, but usually West Montgomery is considered as a jazz player. And also this one, Joe Pass, Night and Day, um, which is a jazz piece, of course, is considered uh, uh, from classical music. <clears throat> but uh, so there is some kind of room, and, but in this case, I think that it is the kind of classification that was very difficult because what defines a music genre, usually it is not just the, the, the notes and the harmony that you played, but usually it is something more related to the sounds so for the instruments, for instance, if you use an electric guitar, you usually tend to consider th that music, a rock music. Um, and in this case, it was not considered any, any, any kind of uh, aspects related to the sounds and the instruments, but just the, the notes that were played. Uh, and there are also other, other things, of course. And then, in order to define a style, you can also uh, try to, to um, use not only the notes that are in a, in, in a sheet, but uh, also other, other things such as accents, for instance, legatos, and so on. So that's basically the idea. Uh, I'd like to share that was my, my, my main study here. If you want, we have some references, but I think we can stop here with, with, with that. And yeah, that's basically my experience with uh, music and uh, let's say computer science in general. Really nice. Gracias, Stefan. Oh, thank you. Gracias a voi. È il momento in cui possiamo fare. Il class classico giro di domande, se qualcuno ne ha qualcuna, io, io ne ho, però vedo che beh, Aldo ha già alzato la mano, quindi vai, anche Mirko, comunque Aldo comincia pure. Faccio io? Ok. Sì. Ok, thank you everyone, pretty interesting, relaxed discussion for an, uh, for an aperitivo, actually, yeah. Uh, no, I, I want to, to, to throw another um, heavy uh, question on the, on the, on the table, uh, which is, um, what is the state of, uh, um, you know, reproduction of the real texture of sound? Because, you know, mostly all these operations we do in, uh, in AI music concerns the way we structure, we recognize patterns in music concerning mainly harmony, melody, uh, the presence of uh, rests or not, etc. But it's only partly as, uh, is associated to the, the, the way we, as musicians, I play the saxophone, for example. And the, most of my expression comes firstly from the production of 
a reasonable sound. Much very, very, um, all the rest is, you know, is related to that. So I want to obtain a certain textural sound. And then I use melody, harmony, and uh, all possible colors and uh, uh, forms, etc., in order to make that, uh, that sound uh, make sense. So I stop here, actually, I just um, wanted to know what do you think about it? Um, Probably Francois. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's a good point because uh, indeed uh, the, the the research uh, has also always uh, be uh, separated into like the symbolic things, the scores, MIDI stuff, and then and, and uh, <clears throat> more continuous domain. Uh, so I, I mean, it's uh, as far as deep learning is concerned, there are some, as you know, sure, I'm sure there are some attempts to to model uh, sounds uh, continuously. There are the WaveNet uh, models and many others, and there are some impressive results. And um, um, I, I don't think that there is yet like a precise studies on, for instance, expressive expressiveness or uh, controlling the sound and uh, how to. But, that, but there are some research projects already. To try, for instance, to um, <clears throat> you take a score, of jazz or classical, and then try to generate uh, expressive performances. Uh, expressive means, I think, what you what you suggest, uh, not only the pitch and the note and the duration, but all the micro timing devi deviations, the 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 vibrato and uh, all the millions of things that you can harmonics. In some yes, 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 yes. All this. So, so, so it's coming. I mean, it's coming. But I. I uh, and, and, and it's true. I mean, that was uh, very interesting. By the way, the the work uh, on the guitar solos. I'm a guitarist also, and uh, uh, and it's really interesting. I'm going to look at this. But uh, and on the other hand, uh, I mean, uh, uh, West Montgomery, uh, you can recognize after a few seconds, not because of the succession of notes, but because of the sound, as as uh, as you know, and the same for sax probably. Um, no, I mean, I think what's interesting is is how the um, the the AI. I think AI here can actually bring some uh, uh, new perspectives in the sense that, uh, as you know, music has always been uh, taught uh, as like with a harmony with a, sol a solfege. I don't know how to call this, but a harmony on one side, which is a uh, the study of uh, pitches in a well, uh, you know, in a in a very nice world where all the durations are quantized. And then on the other side, you learn how to play, and then you realize that it's a completely different world. So that's what uh, musicology also has uh, has been uh, doing. And in AI, because uh, everything is 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 reconsidered from a completely fresh perspective, I think this dichotomy between uh, uh, scores, let's say, and uh, um, continuous uh, or expressive representation is probably going to be less. Um, is already actually less, uh, you know, uh, present. Uh, the same models, more or less, I, are used to do both. And sometimes also people are, I, for instance, considering trying to model sounds and uh, conditioning uh, conditioning the models with the score. Uh, so so let's say that the frontiers between the two is less and less. Um, I think we we suffer probably uh, somehow from the history, the the, the weight of the history of music and the history of musicology and the way it is taught. So I think AI can have a positive impact here, probably. I mean, I, I don't know. Abbiamo anche una domanda di Mirko, perché eh, Mirko Musolesi, perché l'altro Mirko è scomparsa la mano. Ok. Ok. Uh, can you hear me? Sì. Ok. Uh, so... So my question is 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 about the uh, by the way very interesting work I really like it. So my question is about the the use of so how, how is about metrics. So how are you going to evaluate this? Because I th I think a very interesting it's very interesting work. So but the question is and 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 I think there is this a mixture of qualitative or like like audience based uh, uh, like evaluation is something that you like. And also there is this aspect that you want to do that at a certain point at this point, probably something related to actually uh, have a quantitative me measure of your work. Uh, I, and, and, and this is, I think, is, it is kind of a struggle for all this artistic work. In a sense, what, I, I, the interface between art and technology. I don't know if you have any. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't want to to uh, monopolize the uh, <laughs> answers. <laughs> yes, yet you're, st you're still the one in the best position to answer okay. this, I think. No, I think that, so. So this evaluation thing is uh, in all these research areas. People are talking a lot about this. So there are, uh, of course, uh, technical evaluations. When you build an AI model, you can evaluate a lot of stuff like the loss and uh, everything, the, the, the entropy. The, uh, you can also compute plagiarism. Plagiarism, uh, plagiarism uh, measures and all that, but that's that's only a, a technical viewpoint. My, my position on this is very clear. I mean, if especially if you talk about popular music, the only evaluation, unfortunately, is uh, on one side popularity. But as I said before, popularity is not a very good measure because it's polluted by many many factors, which has not have nothing to do with the uh, intrinsic value of the music. Um, but I will tell you one thing I've learned. Uh, because when we did the, uh, the the album the hello world we had we worked with many musicians and um and there are two I'm, I'm going to say something which is a bit shocking maybe for uh pure uh university researchers which have i am also in somehow myself but uh, uh when you make a song with a with a, a musician who is a who is not like a beginner is a real musician so if the guy, if the musician accepts to, uh, so uh, so by the way, you know that the, mu the the songs when they are composed with AI, they are um, recorded at SASEM, for instance, but under the name of the user, not under the name of the program. That's completely impossible. That does not exist actually. So, so the thing is that if you work with Tromae, for instance, we did, or with any other musician, if the guy puts his name, it means that he thinks the song is very very good. He will never put his put his name if he thinks that the song is just okay because it's his reputation which is at stake. So I, the first answer is if a human guy, uh, composer, uh, accepts or uh, wants to put his name, that's a very very strong evaluation. In some, of course, it's not like a statistical one, but it's a very strong. And it's very difficult to get. And the second evaluation is even worse for university people, but. Once you have composed your song, you know what happens. You have to produce it. You know, make it right so that the sound is nice. You have to do a mix. You have to do uh, all the things, and then you have to distribute it. And you have to actually do some work about the promotion, right? So you are going to find a label who is ready to spend some money <coughs> for you. If you find a label who is ready to spend money for this, it means that this guy at, at least thinks it has a lot of value. So that's the second evaluation. Of course, many people see this uh, on the other side of the coin. They say, hey, yeah, all this, uh, it's just a money, a story of money. But come on, I mean, if someone is ready to put money, it means that at least this label thinks it has some value. And of course, this we can debate for hours about this. Um, but in fact, it's true that uh, uh, you have two people, so the composers and the label, or the label, all the dis distribution chain, uh, who are going to tell you uh, interesting stuff about the, the let's say, the, the between code, the value of this, and that's very important. Of course, there is also the critics. Uh, that's that's the, probably the most interesting. But the problem of the critics is that so far with AI. Uh, well, the situation has changed a little bit now, but at the beginning, the critics, they did not talk about the music. They just talk about the AI, which is not interesting, in, uh, not anymore now. So uh, I, I hope, I really push a, a music critics to talk about the music made with AI, not as an artifact of AI, but as, as music like any other kind of music. And when we have this, then we will have some uh, answers, I think, to your uh, question. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So we have to incorporate in our losses the chance that you get some financing. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Great. Abbiamo una domanda di Christian. Yes. Hello. Uh, th thank you very much for this uh, um, this nice uh, series of talks on a topic that I like very much. Um, I, I just. Uh, Throw in a thought. I'm not. I'm not sure whether you can say much about it, but you may. So um, I always think, but I'm, I'm. I'm not sure about that myself, really. That music, uh, to some extent, actually is a social phenomenon, right? So all this uh, discussion is basically just about the musical material, about the score, about the sound, 
Um, however, there, there are things like, uh, for example, genre classification, right? A genre is partly uh, defined, at least uh, in some places, by some people coming together at a certain time and having some interaction between them which is not really in the musical material. A listener may like something because it somehow resonates with some kind of culture among their friends, right? Um, a composer may, um, one may think of a composer or a performer like a guitarist as uh, ba basically communicating some emotions or something. Um, and uh, yeah, I basically wonder, are, are these things all out of the equation? <coughs> kind of um, using AI and music or processing uh, music by AI. Um, so so, so how, how does this whole topic um, connect to this? Oh, I mean, you could, of course, also say, well, this is overestimated, right? We, just are in, we are just interested in the musical material and how it sounds, and that's all. But I'm, I kind of doubt that. So, so I think uh, I, I think Armando should uh, should uh, answer this. Especially, I, I add I add your question because Armando, you played uh, for instance the theme of uh, Beethoven uh, Fifth uh, Fifth Symphony, and uh, you said, and I think you are completely right that it's uh, very very strong and beautiful, and it requires a lot of work and all that. But so I think the question we just had is about. So do you think uh, that the value of uh, this theme? is intrinsic to the theme or is it do we think it's valuable because we are a society and there is like some social uh, dynamics uh, going on you know, i mean is there is there any such thing as intrinsic value of music thank you so much so the question is a bit difficult for me, it's impossible to answer uh, about uh, social uh, aspect, about social uh, things. But uh, the, the, the main problem is uh, uh, human emotion. And so we have to, we have to, to think what, uh, what must we to tell with, with, uh, with the other? What what have, what what are we doing when when we play? So, uh, old uh, ancient people, old uh, composers uh, couldn't to explain what is music, probably, but they they thought exactly what we want to to communicate. So, of of course. Uh, um, our instrument uh, AI can't uh, um, to explain uh, to, to tell uh, with us what uh, a, a, everything. We, the important are we. We are, of course, we men are uh, uh, the 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 main problem. What we want to say. So we have to work a lot with uh, AI or without AI, but we have to work a lot to find, to work and about. Uh, and so uh, music, perhaps uh, we have music, perhaps. Non so se dirlo in italiano o in inglese adesso, scusate, ma Christian, tu stavi suggerendo, non so, Christian, you, you were suggesting that we, we should evaluate both the social and the intrinsic value together in some way by an automatic means. So you were suggesting there should be an algorithm taking into account both of them. No, I'm really not sure, I gotta say. So, so, so um, my point is basically, I think, so there, there is this, I mean, there is the pure intrinsic material, the, the pure musical material that basically can be caught uh, into scores, but also into, I mean, digital recordings and then analyzing the sound and stuff like that. Um, and there's the social component. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm so, so, so this is basically just the point I'm raising. I have no idea what to do with that. So one, one, one could wonder, for example, 
uh, if there are some analysis uh, that does not take this into account, how much is lost? And then, of course, as you said, one can think in the direction, is there any chance to bring it in? But I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not really an expert. I have no idea whether it can be done in any way. So. Because I would think like an engineer even, even once more and say, we still have to make machines that make good music. Once we have them, good music in, in the general sense, that well, once we have them, we'll see how to complicate our loss figure. <laughs> in any case, it's a fundamental question. You're perfectly right. Um, thank you very much, Christian and Armando. Now, can I can I add something? I was muted. I wanted. I mean, on this. Uh, on the, uh, so, um, uh, so from uh, from a musical perspective, uh, I would answer to your question, Christian, in the following way. Absolutely, there are some music which uh, I mean, the music has some uh, some themes, some uh, uh, melodies have an intrinsic value. I mean, which is absolute, which I cannot define. I don't have any metrics for that. But there are certainly um, the history of music shows that some uh, some melodies, as I said, and uh, in some cases uh, it takes centuries uh, to to discover the value of the music. And we all know that Bach was was for two two, two centuries almost uh, unknown, and then it was they were discovered by Mendelssohn. And uh, why was that? Uh, of course, there are some social facts about that. But then there is an intrinsic value in that music which came out eventually. That would be my answer for the, as a musician, a former musician. But then concerning what you said, the social interaction, the social aspect, I, I believe that AI here can play a very important role in the following sense that uh, it gives you, uh, for example, this project I mentioned at the beginning, what we are trying to do is, is uh, for trying to have the possibility, I mean, is, what you want to do is a machine which is able to play in the style of a famous composer so that people also from the didactic point of view can play together with the uh, musician. I mean, can you imagine playing together with uh, Glenn Gould as a piano uh, accompaniment? So that, that would be fantastic for a lot of persons. And uh, here technology can provide a lot of help. And I would like, and I will finish, just mention a uh, something which was astonishing to me. I was talking with the, um, the um, director of the conservat uh, Conservatory of Florence of Music, and they made an experiment. They have uh, some advanced uh, research in music, uh, uh, apparently, and they did a concert where there was a deaf, I underline a deaf girl playing violin, and this girl was uh, playing together with the plant. And the plant, uh, this means that uh, uh, in the following sense, the plant uh, was uh, um, reacting to the sound produced by the violin. There were some sensors uh, in the plant, and then this sensor was transmitting uh, this input to a device which was producing some sound. So this is something which is beyond my imagination as a computer scientist. But this is something that, uh, do, thanks to technology, these people, I mean, musicians, were doing here in Florence. So, I mean, uh, really, I mean, it offers a lot of uh, new perspective also for allowing people to interact in different ways. I will stop here. Grazie, Maurizio. Abbiamo una domanda di Matteo Farnet. So. Eccomi, buonasera a tutti, spero che mi sentiate. Sì. Good, good, good evening. I have a question. I am a statistician, a researcher in statistics and a classical pianist. So first of all, I want to thank everybody. It was extremely interesting. And I am researching on these topics. And in particular, I wanted to ask you this question. So I've seen many uh, statistical and machine learning methods to infer fundamentally, infer musical structures from musical data, okay? So we have neural networks and uh, clustering and so on. My question is, how can we do the, the other way around? So it means we have a theory, let's think about uh, the tonal harmony, so the, the most basic one, and we want to construct a piece starting from a collection of rules. 
And I would like, if possible, to have any hint about this, uh, this direction, which seems to be really interesting. I would like to apply it to the Neapolitan school, which is somehow the root of classical harmony, but this kind of technique can be applied to any kind of classical and popular music. So I'm, I'm very curious about that. Thank you. So, so again, just to understand, uh, you want to, what exactly you want to do? You want to, uh, to generate structure or you want to infer what? Yes, exactly. Generate structure from a collection of rules of prescription, let's say, starting from a manual or something similar. But so you, so what I, what I understand is that, for instance, it would be nice to have to know the rules corresponding to some structures. For instance, you have the AABA, the blues uh, structure, that kind of stuff, but uh, your exactly. sonata, the sonata form, so we know, but uh, so it would be nice to, to know the rules of other structures, right? Like to find those rules in a, in a kind of a human language, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, I don't know anything about that uh, really. I know that the, even the structure, uh, for instance, uh, again, I am sorry, I take the viewpoint of popular music, not so much classical, yes. because, but, uh, but in fact, it's, I think it's the same problem. So, for instance, um, so I, I mean, I have a viewpoint very, very bottom up, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, for instance, a very well known problem is that some, some guy composes a, a, a nice eight bars. Uh, he has a nice A, and then he wants to find a B that goes with the A, right? And not only a B, but maybe he has an A and a B, but how many times should he repeat the B? Should he have a bridge? How long is the intro? That kind of... So all these questions, are actually, I've no, I don't know any, anyone working on this, uh, because uh, from the machine learning pr perspective, there is not so much data, right? Like we don't have... Uh, A's and B going with B's. We have a full song, so it's really hard to know exactly what uh, how the thing was actually built. Uh, mm -hmm. But I can tell you that's a very very important problem for uh, at least beginning. I, I, even uh, advanced composers they have that kind of problem, and they get stuck after a while. What is the nice structure that I should have for the material I have on in my hands? So so I'm not answering anything. I'm just saying that's a very very interesting problem. Uh, 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 also, probably even more than that. I mean, it's probably the the reason why not everyone on Earth is a composer is probably exactly because of that problem. N more than uh, people not knowing how to uh, about harmony. I think a harmony and all this is actually probably even less important than the structure in some sense. And there are many experiments. Uh, can give you later some uh, uh, pointers, but that show which, which show that. Uh, you can probably take any random small sequence of notes uh, and rhythm and if you are smart and you have with the right structure you can turn this into something really fantastically great uh, even in any style right so mm -hmm. maybe that the structure problem is maybe the only problem we have i'm i'm trying to be a bit uh, caricatural here but uh, uh, so it's uh, probably we focus too much on notes and harmony and rhythms because this is also the way we learn about music but uh, uh, there are very interesting composers who take like bird songs or even noise and uh, random noise and turn it into fantastic stuff, right? So, so that's a good subject for you now. If Thank you. This, you can become famous. Quindi hai scelto la strada in salita, in pratica, questo sento di riassumere così. Step by step, step by step. Grazie. Grazie a voi. Ci sono altre domande? Io ne avrei una per, per François perché mi ha, mi ha incuriosito. So I, I, I would have one last question about your skipping profiles. Because you told, the, you, you told us that what's similar between skipping profiles, but not what's different. You told us a long time they are almost invariant, a long space they are almost invariant, and from song to song. I mean, can you make some categorization? Can you cluster? Uh, skipping yes, files into different so, classes. Yes, yeah, so so that so first of all, if you take like the average skip profiles on many songs, so most songs have the same global shape. That the skip is very very large at the beginning, the first eight seconds, many many people skip, right? And of course, obviously they skip at the end because the the, the song is finished. So it's it's, all, like, it's a kind of U like this. But then in the details, 
um, uh, what happens is that you have bumps, you have uh, bumps, and the bumps are always uh, caused by uh, events in the music. Uh, for instance, a voice starts, or the voice stops, or the drums come in, or the sax solo starts or stops. So something happens. Then there is a when something happens, whatever it is, uh, then uh, there is a lot of skips, right? And so, which leads, like, by the way, to a paradox, because if so, it's quite it's quite easy to to compose a song with a with a very flat skip profile. You 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 just make a, a song. Doesn't happen nothing anything. Happens, right? <laughs> so if if nothing happens, for instance, a drone sound or texture doing like or whatever, you have very little skips. The problem is that no one will listen to this. So 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 you have a, a trade-off between the the skip, the bumpiness. And the number of streams. In fact, so I'm not. What I'm going to say is not proven, but it seems that there is a. The, the, if you want to have a lot of streams, if you want to be very popular, you also have to have a very bumpy uh, profile. So, so you cannot have both a lot of streams and a flat profile, which is a ki kind of a uh, counter counterintuitive, let's say. But, but what is what is very sure that the skips are related to events. Now, what would be the next step is to to, to characterize which events. Uh, so there is it's there is no uh, a clear uh, you know uh, uh, thing happening about like for instance when the drum the drum starts and people skip. No, it depends on the context. So so the, of course because it's music and I mean, it's not <laughs> so it's not uh, you know. Uh, Luckily so, enough, it start. So so what we'd like to understand is how to is to be able to predict. Uh, depending on the kind of event and also the event that we are before and actually possibly after also, but uh, then and try to predict more, more exactly what's going on, because then you could have a tool that would be fantastic. Uh, that's a fantasy. You can imagine you make a song, you compose, and then the system tells you, hey, if you replace the sax solo by the guitar <laughs> solo, then you Less skip. that would be the, the dream thing. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Aldo. No, it's, it's another question connected to yours, actually, and um, a variation of what Francois was uh, was presenting. So you have detected some patterns related to the skipping uh, behavior, but have you tried to associate it with forms? For example, you know, something that Valentina often noticed, that Beatles started directly with the melody instead of having an introduction or other things like those. That may be also an interesting correlation to to verify. Yes, yeah, no, so we did not do this. Uh, the, I think that this is the kind of stuff that people should be doing, able to do, because uh, many of this data is actually available, not the skip maybe, but uh, but uh, but a lot of information is uh, publicly available. Now there is also a problem because as you know, uh, the streaming uh, uh, platforms uh, emphasize, uh, exert a pressure for songs to be, uh, shorter and shorter also the intro introduction be very short i mean if the pink floyd were doing a song today probably no one would uh, listen to it because uh, the, there are some of them are just basically a very long intro which i like by the way very much but uh, so so the, the 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 problem is that you have an interplay between the platform this is the digital economy of the music and the music itself so it, all this is very complicated but uh, cool. And it's, it's true that the Beatles, it is being said that the Beatles would put all the ingredients of the song very, very quickly in the intro so that uh, so to be very catchy. But I don't know if it's like scientifically it's a sound. I don't know if it's always the case. Uh, the only thing I know is that we know approximately nothing about how people perceive songs um, about what should be a good intro about uh, you know about all this? We have ideas, we we have uh, intuitions, but we don't have a, a lot of uh, facts. Uh, and I, I think that now with the we the researchers should should be listening, uh, looking at this because we have a lot of data, so we can probably learn a lot of things about all this. But the, the answer I would say today is that we we know almost nothing. Thank you. We still have few 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 raised hands, Armando. Yes, I have a question for our friends, and, uh, and it, it is a, a simple question. But uh, in um, in music, in, in our music, which is 
the link uh, to sound and uh, emotion, and, um, which is uh, I I would like to to avoid the 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 loop effect in music. So uh, uh, also Beethoven. Uh, uh, want, don't want uh, loop effect in music and uh, and and in his music in this work without uh, this is better of course. So in uh, in our music in in uh, AI music is uh, is there a, a loop effect because loop is not uh, held for. Uh, for for our for me I think thank you. So, so what do you call a loop effect then exactly in that case? And repetition about uh, modular music about uh, modular and repetition of uh, uh, a loop a simple loop about construction music. And non so se è chiaro Riccardo e la domanda è è possibile evitare effetti loop nella musica perché il, è la musica che gira su se stessa insomma questo è un po quello che si cerca di evitare nel, nel lavoro del, del, del musicista diciamo ok non so se qualcuno più musicista di me può aiutarti a reinterpretarlo ma per me è chiarissimo io credo che ci sia una differenza fondamentale tra i generi musicali in questo caso però magari lasciamo qualcun altro il commento yeah. But so this means that Armando claims that uh, Beethoven wouldn't like James Brown. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I would like to know if uh, Beethoven would have liked the Beatles. That I would like to know. I don't know. I think I I would think that yes. But uh, but uh, yeah, I mean there are lots of. Uh, I mean the music is very repetitive today, probably also because the people use all the software where you can do copy paste uh, very easily. Uh, so yes, there is more repetition today. There is probably much less invention. By the way, the reason why I'm studying AI for popular music is the hope that I can bring more uh, novelty in the melodies, in the harmonies, uh, the rhythms of the of popular songs. So that's so my aim is not to enrich the uh, explorative music because I don't think they need any tools, but it's more to have an impact on the popular music because I think that, as you know, as you hear, most many mo most of the songs they have like only three or four chords and the melodies which move very very small steps and all this uh, very very boring stuff. So so I, and I hope that uh, and I think that AI can bring more uh, innovation in there. Exactly, so that's what I'm trying to do, and also in the structure. Um, Great. Okay. Maurizio, poi penso che dovremmo fermare la discussione, che ho capito che piace molto, e sono molto contento, yeah. però... Yes, on this very last point mentioned by François, I think we have a, a kind of a contradiction in the, in the following sense here. So, as Armando was saying, uh, um people i mean people training in classic music they they don't like repetition they don't like uh, simple patterns they don't like simple harmony that's quite clear no and uh, people trained in classic music have uh, the pretension to be i mean to to practice complex music complex structure more in invention all those these things that you know very well and um, ai you are saying could try to bring these things into popular music, which could be good. But on the other hand, your experiments uh, that you mentioned before about uh, songs, uh, song skip, uh, they seems to indicate that actually, even though you say that you don't have a certain uh, conclusions, you don't have a certain data, but still seems to indicate that people do like, most of the people do like uh, simplicity. They like simple patterns. They like, and when something strange happens, they skip. So how can we solve that? I, I mean, uh, I mean, and, and as a classic music, I, I do listen to all kind of music, but I mean, certainly the music that my daughter is, which by the way is playing now, perhaps you listen, the, 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 uh, the music that my daughter likes, uh, I mean, Two, two notes, two accords, and that's it. So, I mean, 
I know. <laughs> so, so I did not say I did not say that uh, people skip when something strange happens. I said people skip when something happens, whatever it is. Doesn't need to be strange. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> not not doesn't have to be strange. Uh, uh, but I agree with you. Yeah, the, 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 it's not like a paradox. It's because we have so much data, and now also the the music is. Uh, is shared the same music is shared by so many people so we still we see a statistical effects but uh, but uh, most of the people who listen to music are young people listening to rap today so if you are interested in how people listen to beethoven it's it's going to be very uh, the data is going to be very hard to analyze i'm not saying it's impossible but uh, we have data that that uh, that uh, it is so huge and so uh, so that's very hard to uh, let's say draw conclusions on uh, on very specific uh, genres today. Uh, but I am less uh, pessimistic than you. I mean, uh, um, yeah, it's true that many people, most people, probably are interested in in uh, very uh, you know, simple music. That's very true. I, I'm convinced of this. But it does not mean that there is no room for uh, new kinds of music and uh, new ways. For, for instance, even if you consider the Beatles again, I mean, the, the, what they did in some sense, you can see this as bringing a little bit of classical music into pop, right? They did it for some songs, not all the songs. But so, and thanks to the Beatles, many people then heard like a violin uh, quartet. They had uh, no, no interest for that before. So you can see the, 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 the Beatles as also a kind of bridge trying to, to bring people to other kinds of music. So that, that in that sense, I think that AI will and I'm sure this, uh, you know, uh, put, push people to uh, to listen to uh, new kinds of music. For instance, just I finish on that. But the tools which 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 we are building now for uh, Spotify, and uh, and especially for a platform called Soundtrap, which is a collaborative uh, uh, music editor online, which is used heavily in uh, music schools in the States uh, for young people, not uh, professional, but you really uh, young, young uh, you know, uh, college. Uh, and those people, very often, the only music they know is a rap, you know, is rap that they have heard on the TV. That's all they have. And so with with, uh, with the tools that we're building, we hope that we, we can push them, for instance, to say, hey, I'm going to take this piece of classic and music and then transform it with tides transfer, with uh, all sorts of mechanisms to, to create a new kind of texture, maybe for a rap song initially, but, but maybe, but then it's also a door that you can open for them to listen to something else. So I'm really seeing the, 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 the world in a completely uh, like bottom up and uh, uh, fashion. Uh, and in, in, in that uh, respect, I think AI can bring a lot, um, but it's not going to solve all the problems that we have <laughs> raised, obviously. <laughs> I would take home the message that the AI can bring a lot as a final message for this meeting. <laughs> I would say that's a very good point. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I really hope that nobody has us a question. <laughs> no, actually, I, 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 we do have a question from a student and musician, but ignorant about AI. Uh, can, you, can you have a look at the chat? So I'm reading it. Is oh, it possible to understand just listening to a song if it is composed using AI? I would say no. So, what's your answer, Maurizio or Francois, whatever? I, I would say no. It's not. It's very difficult because, uh, I mean, for example, an AI could uh, could harmonize a, a melody in the style of Bach, a choral, and then uh, most people would mis misunderstand and would. Uh, exchange that for Bach, so very difficult. Ok, bene. Io ringrazio tutti, è stato veramente molto interessante, sono molto contento. Thank you very much, François, grazie Armando. Thank you. E grazie, grazie Maurizio. Non, non riuscirò a, a... Grazie Stefano, non riuscirò a ringraziare tutti per la discussione, quindi non mi rimane che dire buona serata. So... A lot, a lot of classical music is boring music, uh, of course. Not, not only modern music. We have a lot of boring classical music. Thank you so much. Grazie a tutti veramente. Se, se volete condividere qualche cosa, poi da far pubblicare sul, sul sito, basta che me lo mandiate. Vi ringrazio ancora. Buona serata a tutti.
See you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. 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 Thanks.